this is the first year that I've kind of been able to put the whole day together, swim, bike and run and run so strong off of that bike. So yeah, mentally you have to be there, you have to be willing to hurt and you have to be willing to battle everyone until the finish. Are you confident by uh, next Saturday's time that you will be a world champion? <laughs> um, you know what, I feel more nervous than normal and I think that's because I know how good shape I'm in. So. I never really want to go into the race putting that pressure on myself, but ultimately it is a world champs and I'm going to be going all in to try and win that world title. Well, I've wanted to race a 70.3 for a long time. I think I wanted to do one when I was 15, but that was not going to happen. Um, thankfully, my coach at the time said no, and then my coaches have always said no until now, so I'm just grateful for the opportunity. I'm just thinking of it as a big training day. I wanna have fun out there. I respect the w women who race and I don't think I'll be anywhere close to them. So I'm just out there gonna race my race. I have my plan, realizing that a lot happens. I don't know what I don't know. So I think I'm very nervous and we'll see what happens. which is great. This weekend for me is just all about getting back to racing. I'm four and a half months postpartum and my number one goal for this race was getting to the start line in one piece, excited to compete. And I feel that I have done that. I think that if I I'm in the mix of this race and I feel like I am racing and competing. That will be a huge victory as well. I don't want to feel like I'm surviving. I want to feel like I'm in the race. I think that if I'm top five, that would be a really, really solid day, which feels weird because I usually go into every race aiming to win. My motivation is different now. There's, there in some ways are, there's more at stake, but on the other hand, I feel like I've already won. This is my first Ironman. I never, ever gone this distance before. And we were trying to figure out a good Ironman to do. And I was in uh, St. Pölten racing a half like in end of May so then we didn't have loads of time to prepare uh, and I was ready to go to the UK but I couldn't go there without a quarantine uh, I had actually had to quarantine 10 days even though I was vaccinated so that kind of disappeared uh, the other option was Lanzarote which is a super hard one so that's probably an hour longer uh, which is maybe not a smart move for a first Ironman to go on like the longest Ironman you can do in the world. And then there was Lake Placid. Uh, and I really enjoy racing in the US. I love the atmosphere, the races. Uh, we're gonna go back via New York for a day, so that's really cool. And it's one of the places where I can convince my partner to come with me. So it was like all thumbs up. On your first debut Ironman, what's the coincidence that the uh, Olympics have their triathlon on Sunday? Uh, I know! like. So I've been to the past three Olympic Games. So Beijing, London, Rio. Uh, there was a time about two years ago when I was contemplating trying to go to Tokyo as well. And then of course everything changed and um, with the games not happening and I was like, okay, it's all about the Ironman. And it was never the plan, but the way it was with also like enough time to qualify for Kona, uh, making me, giving me a bit of time to have a second uh, attempt as well, if it doesn't work out the way I planned it. And now looking at the schedule, like I was actually asked to commentate the race back in Swedish TV. And when I had the question, I looked at the game's date. It's like, oh, actually, are we raising an Ironman about the very same day? So it's, it's pretty cool. <laughs> this in my back pocket the whole time and was just uh, waiting till after Boulder to see if I wanted to do it or not and 
Boulder didn't go as planned. <laughs> so figured why not? I had it already booked. I actually, I had flights to Finland booked and I didn't have flights back home booked. <laughs> so I uh, came to Finland. And the jet lag's okay? No, it's awful. <laughs> I'm having a really rough go of it um, coming here. So I don't know if that's also, uh, so I'm still breastfeeding my daughter. <laughs> and so like during the night is when I would be feeding her. And so then I'm having like fullness issues <laughs> when I'm sleeping. So it's mom problems. So, <laughs> so if I got this right, you're talking about daughters. Yeah. You became a mum before triathlon yeah and then got into professional triathlon so how's uh how are you balancing that and uh, how's, how's life i think balance is a curse word balance balance is is a facade there's no there's no real balance in life like i mean right now am i balancing being a mom and a triathlete no i'm like 100 percent a triathlete right now right and so i i think I think if you maybe if you think of balance in terms of like, you know, weeks, months, years, lifetime, there's a balance in my lifetime. Is there a balance day to day? No. Like, but, you know, I think that that's healthy and I think that that's OK. So uh, looking at the profile what do you yeah. think to the course. Um, I, well, looking at the profile online, I, uh, for the run, I didn't think it was very hilly, but then I was running on it yesterday, uh, running on the course yesterday and it, there was some bumps, like, like, it's, I guess it's just like, there's not any big hills. It's just like really steep inclines and like some random areas. And so it just like, when it, when it's not, um, a gradual hill, when it's a steep incline, it just really shuffles up your, like, your I don't know, your gait and everything. And so it's hard to keep your rhythm. I guess that's the word, rhythm. Gunner! What are these freaking amazing girls? Oh! <laughs> <laughs>